Are we all clear? All right, let's go to some of the feedback here. We got a lot of it. No, new Twitch homies, the show is not always like this. Sometimes it is. This person here says... Brian Cage and Absolute Ricky Starks are now apparently together as a duo under Taz's managerial duties. Now they can do Cage and Starks versus Moxley and Darby Allen. Great! Yeah. So if you guys don't know the story, Ricky Starks was brought in for basically a tryout match. And he did so good that in the middle of the match, they not only decided that they were going to hire him... But they already started coming up with ideas for what to do with the guy. No, wait a second. Yes. I Are you sure that this is not a wrestling tall tale, if this is not being exaggerated no. a little bit? Are you sure? Now, I believe when Cody said that Ricky Starks had $4.63 in his bank account, one, I took it as a great zing against the NWA, but also I took that as maybe being legit because he's out there struggling and striving and trying to do his thing and get known and whatnot. And it's only been a, a very short period of time since he's had a chance to do that, so I believe that. But you bring in a guy that looked that good on YouTube for the NWA out there. Was there initial, or I think that he was the inaugural NWA television champion? You know he's got something there. I can't believe that it took during that match with Cody for them to open their eyes and say that, hey, we could have a place for a guy like Ricky Starks. I don't know about that. That no, feels very pro wrestling illustrated the, to the me. The point of the match, they've never even told that story on TV. That's a behind-the-scenes story. They're the, working you. The, no. The, the whole thing, he was brought in for a tryout match. Obviously, they knew how talented he was, but they were so impressed with the actual match. Which, by the way, listen. I watched those NWA shows. I loved Ricky Starks. I thought Ricky Starks was very talented. But even I, when I watched that match, was impressed by how great Ricky Starks did. That dude came out, and he had so much poise, and he showed so much charisma, and they had such a fun match. I don't doubt for one second that they knew he was good, like I did. And then in the middle of the match, they went, holy smokes, like... Get the contract now. That's the story. Hey, no matter how it went down, I'm happy he's there. I really am. And I, I know, and I and I don't want to think about this, and you don't want to bring this up, but you think about, hopefully it's not a case of like last in, first out, when they're talking about, Tony Khan has talked about the possibility of cutting people down the line. It is... It, it's terrible to think about this because they have the ability to have such an umbrella right now when it's so needed, you know, with the pro wrestling. We talk about with WWE not making any new stars and, and AEW, you know, for whatever you think about them, has got a just a wide variety of people that to get behind and you could possibly, you know, attach your fandom to. You know, when I was growing up, yeah, I loved Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood, but it was like the Ronnie Garvins of the world and people like that that, you know, I was just a big of, as a fan of. And people are finding that with AEW, whether it be a sunny kiss or whether you're an old fan and still love seeing Dustin Rhodes or whatever it is, they have that. And I hope, you know, as everything Everything goes on here there you know everything does kind of subside covid wise because i don't want to see anybody lose their ch shot and their job and their chance on a national scale before we even have a chance to really take off with it